hello everyone welcome back to my channel in today's video we are going to learn about routing we will see what is routing what are the inputs that are required to perform routing what are the outputs that we receive after the routing stage is completed and what are the different stages that are involved in the routing stage of the PNR flow so without any further ado let's get started So what is routing? Routing is the process of converting every logical connection present in the netlist into a physical connection with the help of metals and VRs. Now while converting this logical connection into physical connection, certain design rules are kept in mind. Design rules from the foundry like minimum spacing of the metal layers, minimum width, minimum area, maximum length, etc. These rules are important for the smooth fabrication of metals and vias in the foundry. So that's why while routing these rules are kept in mind. These rules are called design rules. Now let's look at the logical connection of three instances in the netlist. Let's say the logical connection of these instances looks something like this. The inputs of instance 3 are coming from the output of instance 1 and 2. Now let's see how this will translate into a physical connection. As you can see here, the output pin of instance 1 is connected to the input pin of instance 3 through metal traces and vias. And as you can see here, the horizontal metal is differently color coded to the vertical metal because these will be in the different layers. And this horizontal and vertical metal are connected through a via. So what is it that we are trying to achieve through routing? So the first and foremost goal of routing is to convert all the logical connection present in the netlist into a physical connection and while doing so it should be ensured that minimum routing resources are used. Why minimum routing resources? Because routing resources are directly linked to the cost and if the routing resources are more and if unnecessary routing resources are used then it could even lead to congestion in certain areas. So it should be ensured that the minimum routing resources are used and while routing the design while converting every logical connection into physical connection it should be ensured that there are minimum DRC and LVS violations. Now what are DRC violations? As we discussed this uh, briefly earlier, there are certain design rules that are set by the foundry that ensures that the metals and vias that are laid out in the design are fabricated properly. So those design rules should be met while routing the design and if they are not met then we get the DRC violations which are design rule check violations. So for example minimum spacing, minimum area, maximum area etc. These are the example of DRC violations. Now what is LVS? LVS stands for layout versus schematic. LVS check ensures that whatever the connection that is present in the schematic, the same connection should be there in the layout. So it means that the functionality that is achieved from the schematic that is netlist, the same functionality should be achieved after the physical connections are made that is from the layout. So it mainly checks that there should not be any shorts or opens in the designs. Uh, if there are shorts and opens then NV LVS will fail because the same functionality will not be achieved from the layout, right? And of course there should not be any uh, unnecessary detouring of nets because if there are unnecessary detouring of nets it can create so many problems like it can create timing problems, it can lead to congestion and it can uh, increase the routing resources which can increase the cost later so um, so there should not be any unnecessary detouring of nets and while routing the design PPA requirement should always be kept in mind PPA stands for power performance and area power performance is the timing and area requirement should always be kept in mind while routing so what are the inputs that are required before we start the routing we need a design which is done with placement, CTS and optimization. Then we need a technology file which contains the physical information of the metals and VRs and the design rules that should be kept in mind while performing the routing. Then we need the constraints. See SDC is nothing but synopsis design constraints. We also need the timing information of all the cells. So dot lib contains the timing information of all the cells. Then we need the RC parasitics of metal per unit length which is 
uh, there in this TLU plus file. T TLU plus stands for table lookup file. So once we have all these inputs, we can start the routing. Now once the routing is completed, we will have the design with all the physical connections in place. And because we have all the connections, physical connections in place, we can extract the parasitic information of all the nets in the form of SPEF file. And also we can finally get the DRC LBS congestion timing reports because now all the steps of the PNR flow is done. Since the routing is complete, we will have the final timing congestion DRC and LBS numbers. Before we start the routing, there are certain prerequisite checks that we should do first thing is we should check that the congestion timing drv skew and latency numbers are acceptable because if they are not then they are only going to get worse post routing so these numbers should be in the acceptable range the another thing is there should not be any overlap overlapping cells in the design because if the cells are overlapping then their pins will also overlap and if their pins will overlap then the routing tool will not be able to access the pins properly and also there should not be any blocked pins because if the pins are blocked then again the routing tool will not be able to do the routing from the pin to the pin so uh, it will not be able to access the pin and also all the routing related settings for example the minimum and maximum layer that you want to set for routing should be checked all or for example do you want the routing to be timing related timing driven or congestion driven so these kind of settings should be checked before we start the routing so once we have all the inputs and we have checked the prerequisites of routing we can finally move on to the routing steps and routing is done in the four steps as you can see the first step is the global routing followed by the track assignment followed by detailed detailed routing and search and repair detailed routing and search and repair happen simultaneously first the for example first the first iteration of detailed routing will happen followed by search and repair and then iteration 2 of detailed routing and so on now let's look into these steps in little bit more detail Now let's look at the first step of the routing which is known as global routing. Since global routing is the first step, during this step some kind of planning happens. During global routing, the router plans that which signal will be routed where. In order to do that, the router divides the routing portion of the design into small small rectangles called G cells. And then signal nets are assigned to the G cells. Now remember that the global router does not assign more nets to a G cell than the tracks can accommodate because if it do if it does uh, that then it can cause the congestion, right? So global router only assigns as, as many nets to a G cell as what it can accommodate. Now remember that during global routing only assigning the signal net to metal layer and G cell happens. For example, if there is a signal net, then only this will be decided that this particular signal net will be routed in which G cell and in which layer. But it will not be actually physically routed during this global routing step and even the tracks will not be assigned to that particular metal layer. Only the metal layer and the G cell of that net will be decided during this step. Now the next step after global routing is the track assignment. During track assignment, tracks are assigned to each global route and also the overlapping is removed. Now during global routing, signals were assigned to the G cells. Like it was decided that these particular signals will be routed in this particular G cell. But since the signals were just assigned, there could be overlaps also. But since in track assignment, the actual routing tracks are decided for each of these signal nets, the overlapping is automatically removed. Now once the global routing and the track assignment is completed, the next step is the detailed routing. During detailed routing, the detailed router uses the routing plan laid by the router during the global routing and track assignment and actually lays metal to logically connect pins with nets and other pins in the design. So during detailed routing step, actual metal traces are laid out and during this step, mul multiple iterations are done to fix the violations created during track assignment. 
as we saw earlier that detailed routing and search and repair go hand in hand once the first iteration of detailed routing happens the search and repair stage starts and during this stage it uh, uh, tries to fix all the drcs so it locates all the drc affected areas and reroutes them to fix the drc violations then again the uh, second iteration of detailed routing uh, starts and uh, it goes on like this with this all the stages of routing completes and the checklist after routing starts so after routing is done we should check that timing should be under control drv should be fixable power can power should be under control congestion should be under control then there should be minimum shorts and opens and lvs violations which can be easily fixed so once the routing is done we need to take care of all these things and finally fix everything but after routing these should be minimum so this is it from my side guys if you have any uh, doubts or any feedback you can post them in the comment section below thanks for watching